Hi there, I'm Rich McGee from Interrel Consulting, and we're going to discuss how to use scenarios and sandboxes in Oracle Analytics Cloud. In the past, you most likely tried different solutions to provide users with sandboxing capabilities. Things I've seen folks do are make a lot of copies of the cube or add members to the scenario dimension. I've also seen people trying to come up with some kind of homemade hybrid Excel visual basic thing. But depending on the size of the cubes that you have to copy, plenty of time will be spent also loading and calculating, not just copying. If we add scenario members, then the cube will get bloated and calculations will slow down and other solutions have a short lifespan or kind of take on a personality all of their own. Here are the alternatives. Do you want an old school homemade sandbox or do you want a state of the art sandbox? As my Aunt Thelma used to say when offering me a piece of candy, you want homemade or store bought. OAC makes it simple to set up sandboxes and scenarios. All you really have to do is turn on the capability. To enable an existing application for sandboxes and scenarios, you need to do a little more configuration. We'll cover that soon. In SBase, we're used to using the term scenario as representing a dimension. However, in OAC, we need to think in terms of modeling scenarios. A modeling scenario is nothing more than a way to make a distinction between sandboxes and move through the workflow. Each scenario is tied to a sandbox. The sandboxes themselves are a slice of the cube. The use of scenarios allows us to create simple workflow tasks to review, reject, or approve a slice. The approved slice can then be written back to the base data. Setting up a new cube for modeling scenario is really easy. Log on to your cloud instance and under the application, choose create. Type in the application name and the cube name. Next, check the box to enable scenario management. Type in the number of scenarios. The default is 100. Do not check the box for aggregate storage. Let's look at what happened when we enabled scenario modeling. Highlight the cube, then click outline. You'll note there's a dimension now named sandbox. Here are the sandbox members created. OAC generically names them for you. Note the top member's name base. This is where the cube data is separated so that we don't mess with the real numbers. Once we're satisfied with the sandbox data, it can be written back to the base member. There are a few things to consider uh, when enabling scenario modeling for an existing cube. All the base data is removed, as in clearing the cube. Since we've added a new dimension called Sandbox, it is possible that you will have to touch all of your S-Base objects, such as scripts, rules files, and reports. They may need to include references to the new Sandbox dimension. To enable an existing cube for scenario modeling, highlight the cube, then click on Scenario. Now navigate to the Administration tab, the little dude with the wrench, then click Create Sandbox. Here you can enter the number of sandboxes. The default is 100. Really, that should be plenty. But if your users go crazy for sandboxes, you can always add more. Click on the cube, then click Scenario. Again, find the little dude with the wrench and click Add Sandbox. Select the number of members and you are finished. Let's start working with a scenario enabled cube. Click on the cube, then click Scenario. Let's add a scenario to our cube. On the General tab, you will need at the very least to fill in a name and assign a due date. Optionally, you can select a priority of low, medium, or high and give the scenario a description. The Approvers tab lets us define which users can approve a scenario. In this case, Steve is the only one who will be able to approve this scenario. There's also a Participants tab. Here we've assigned Joe and Wayne as participants. This gives them the capability to collaborate and make changes to the sandbox data. Note that participants need to have database update or database access permissions. Now save and close the scenario. And voila! The all budget scenario has been created along with its workflow. We'll now talk about what the user needs to do. First, when the scenario enabled cube is created, the base data, remember this is the data we start with, is equal to the sandbox data as shown here in member SB0. Let's start using the sandbox. Let's change the sales number in member SB0 to 500. Next, we'll submit the data. Remember, we've only submitted 500 in sales to the sandbox. The base data remains intact. Now, we're going to place that change into the scenario workflow. Show changes lets us look at what we did in SmartView. Here, in the OAC UI, we can see the change we made in SmartView to the scenario. 
The next part of the process is to submit the changes we made into the workflow. By doing this, the approver will be able to see our changes. We can also place a comment in our submission. The scenario is now submitted to the workflow process. When Steve, remember Steve? He's the guy who's designated to approve our numbers. When Steve logs on and looks at the scenarios, he will also see this entry in his workflow, letting him know there's been a scenario submitted for his approval. Steve can now approve or reject this change. Once Steve has approved the numbers, the status changes to approved. The last thing that needs to happen is for Steve to apply the scenario data to the base data. Once the data is applied, the status of the scenario changes to reflect the same. Now the scenario data has updated the base data. If we go back in a smart view, we can see that the base data now equals the changes we made in the sandbox. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about scenarios and sandboxes. One last thing, when you go to the sandbox, don't forget your tools.